स्थापकाय धर्मस्वूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठा राम कृष्णा ते नम यथाग्निर्दाहिका शक्ति राम कृष्णे स्थिताद्या शारदा प्रणमा नम श्रीयतिराजा विवेकानंदसूर सच्चेत्सुखस्वूपय स्वामीनेतापहारिणे अज्ञानतिरांध से ज्ञाजनशलाक चक्षुन्मीलित तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ओ सहना सहन मुनक्त सह वीर गरवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मिदिषा वह ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ सर्वे सुखि सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्य कचिदुखवागे ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ यस नमस्ते सुबोदय एंड शुभ दिन टू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑफ दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वीकली वेबिनार ऑन बिल्डिंग ए रिसर्जेंट इंडिया थ्रू म्यूजिक टूडेज टॉपिक विल बी फोकस्ड ऑन म्यूजिक क्लासिकल म्यूजिक डिवोशनल म्यूजिक एक्सेट्रा by some very important people earlier we did two programs if some of you can recollect building a resurgent india through education india's past india's future and present of education it was well received by many guests many uh, educators the second was building a resurgent india through education education of awaken citizenship education of contributor personality etc which were discussed by our uh, monks and uh, by educators next we have today's program that is building a resurgent india through music this is a all india program not restricted to one region or language so we have kept english as the medium and uh, we have a very important guest in pandit nayan ghosh ji from mumbai nayan ghosh ji from mumbai he is our namaste nayan ghosh ji welcome to our namaste our... namaste swami ji <laughs> very happy to have you and uh, very fortunate for all the brothers and sisters in india to get connected with you and to see you to listen to you and to know about you and uh, get more inspired more uh, educated more informed about music etc thank you so it is our fortune that you are our devotee our uh, well wisher and uh, like to participate in ramakrishna vivekananda teachings and uh, very nice of you just on a phone call you have agreed uh, you are this one is very um, Large hearted, thanks to your predecessors of Panalal Ghosh ji, your father Nikhil Ghosh ji, very emotional. <clears throat> They are all connected with our traditions, yes. Ramakrishna Vivekananda tradition in Belur Math, and for many ages, you are also in that line along with your son. So, for the benefit of the viewers here, or participants, hundreds will join from different parts of the country, young and old. and uh, artists from different places interested in music so uh 
a short note about our just a minute a short note about our chief guest today pandit nayan ghosh who comes in the great line of the indian musicians both instrumental and vocal he is acclaimed in india around the world as one of the india's foremost musicians the only maestro with superlative command on two diverse instruments namely the sitar and the tabla son and a disciple of the 20th century wizard tabla wizard nikhil ghosh ji and a nephew of panalal ghosh was the father of north indian classical music for the youngsters to know about panalal ghosh and to know about nikhil ghosh you have to go to youtube and get into google because they are not there now their art their performances their concerts are recorded and put into youtube thanks to technology and panalal ghosh ji is connected with our belur math swami shivananda ji maharaj the third second president of the ramakrishna order he was uh, blessing them their family that's how nayan ghosh is connected through nikhil ghosh and nikhil ghosh sitar is cycle sparkle with intense melodiousness nayan his judicious balance of the gayaki vocalization and the instrumental music uh, elements reveal his unswerving focus on musical form and beauty nikhil ghosh ji nayan ghosh ji is born in 1956 he started playing the sitar and tabla as a child prodigy at the age of 4 and since the age of from 1974 his music took him across continents all over the world to be short every city every country had the blessings of listening to nayan ghosh ji is a recipient of several awards the sangeet natak academy award in 2014 and then 1998 achievement award from the lieutenant governor of california and there are so many things that he has uh, achieved we have to just see what he has not achieved in this life of 65 years and nayan ghosh ji has the honor of playing with several top artists of the country like pandit ravi shankar ustad velayat khan ji pandit nikhil banerjee amjad ali khan shubh kumar sharma these are some of the top most artists of the country and the world who have taken indian music to high levels of excellence uh, spread the indian culture all over the world so this is our fortune to have pandit nayan ghosh online with us and uh, presently is the director of india's leading music academy sangeet mahabharati in juhu mumbai imparting advanced training to numerous young aspirants musicians young musicians and the year 2018 that is two years back uh, nayan ghosh performed the 50th year of his career and he resides in mumbai and he travels all over the country not now though uh, due to the lockdown and due to the covid-19 infection all over the country he is in mumbai at present uh, he has performed in many uh, what you call uh, programs in the ramakrishna math and mission that it be in belur math or gol park in uh, lucknow in bhuvaneshwar recently several places he has performed and nayan ghosh is uh, very kind hearted very loving in first this one Uh, I have seen his videos, seen his performance here and there, and uh, <clears throat> his tabla so beautiful, so loving, like a child playing with toys. <laughs> Nayan Ghosh is there on the tabla and the sitar, both singing and playing. So he is with us today, and uh, we will listen to him. And uh, next, we have some young artists connected with uh, connected with me personally, and connected with the Ramakrishna Math here and there. May I request Vedan Bharadwaj from Chennai to come online, please. Vedan Bharadwaj from Chennai. Yes. Namaste, Swami Ji. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> Namaste, Nayan Ghosh Ji. Namaste. <laughs> Vedan's introduction will be given by another young budding artist from Hyderabad, Emily Anirudh Sharma. Anirudh, your turn. Pranam, Maharaj. Pranam, Pandit Ji. 
and Namaste Vedant Bhai. So uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Vedant Bhai. I'm very happy to introduce him, a very talented musician uh, whose soulful rendition of Santwani and uh, he has actually reintroduced the youth to the profound truths of uh, Know, the words of the saints and uh, Vedant ji is a multifaceted musician and a music composer who dabbles in several genres of music ranging from classical to blues. It's quite a wide range. He has sung at several music festivals at prestigious venues such as the Playhouse Theatre Company, Kala Utsavam, Singapore, Malwa Kabir Yatra, Mumbai Kabir Festival, Ladakh Music Confluence, among others. Hindustan, uh, he, he has formally learned Karnatic, Hindustani and Western music and is currently under the tutelage of Sri Ramamurti Ji. And uh, Vedant is, a, is, a, is the director of Chennai Children's Choir, a choir of children from economically challenged backgrounds who represented India at the Serenade Karal Festival and sang at the prestigious Kennedy Center in Washington. It's a great uh, honor to have you, Vedant Bhai. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here too. Thank you. Yes. Nayan Gosji, young artist. You yes. To all of them. And uh, may I request uh, Praveen D. Rao from Bangalore to come online, please. Praveen. Namaskar. Namaste, Swamiji. Namaste, yes. Nayan Gosji. Namaste, Vedant. Namaste. 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 So, Praveen D. Rao is my childhood friend. You cannot miss the fun and uh, all <laughs> that we had. <laughs> Ramakrishna Mat campus as uh, the members of the Vivekananda Balak Sangha, a very unique training center last 65, 70 years in Ramakrishna Mat Bangalore. It has produced several stalwarts, uh, several monks, and uh, several top uh, leaders in the country. Uh, train was started by Swami Yatishwaranandaji in 1953, and it's going on every week, every Sunday, every day almost. Ravindi Rao is a product of that. and. Uh, to be short, he started with harmonium. Now I think he plays nearly 21 instruments. Oh, God. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I think that is minimum. <laughs> he has got his own studio. And uh, through Pravindi Rao's uh, devotion to Vivekananda and Ramakrishna, there's a beautiful music uh, choir from Viveka Namana, a tribute to Swami Vivekananda. The songs which he sang, the, uh, the songs which he composed, and the songs which he liked, was all put on to a big concerts in Belurmat, in Hyderabad, in Mysore, and that is all recorded. I'll forward it to Nayan Goshi for his uh, viewing yeah. and blessings. Yeah. So, Pravin Rao is a music director of international acclaim, and uh, he, is in, he, he is his own introduction. I will not tell when we <laughs> listen to him, his life journey will be wonderful. So, we have another young artist from Chennai, namely my young friend Aditya Srinivasan. Please come online. Yeah, Aditya, your top musician with a beard and all. <laughs> so you can uh, unmute your mic, Aditya. Namaskar, everybody. Uh, Panditji, namaste. namaste. Ashirwad, please. Praveenji, namaste. Vedantana, okay. how are you? So Aditya is uh, another child prodigy. Uh, he is my friend from the last 15, 20 years. Uh, to make fun of him, I went to his school when I was in ninth standard. He was sitting in the last bench and making fun of me. <laughs> of my <laughs> class and all. <laughs> but later he got that idea of uh, character building and inspiration and music in his mind. And uh, he is a percussionist. And um, he has a sound engineer, went to Berkeley, went to Spain, Madrid, I think, yeah and then started his own studio in, Chen in Chennai and uh, he is in regular contact with us. So he will also uh, listen to you and also ask a few questions to Pandit Nayan Ghoshji on music, on Indian culture, values, etc. So I'm happy that uh, Aditya has uh, made time today and he has to make time, no choice for him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we have four important people on roll. We have Pandit Nayan Ghosh, Praveen Dirao, Vedan Bharatwaj and Aditya Srinivasan. Yes. So this is a program based on from Vivekananda's ideas of India, uh, rebuilding India. There is a education sector, there is economic sector, there is a music sector, 
there is sports sector, there is uh, industry, there is agriculture, there are so many other things going on. Where India is in a dilemma today, where exactly we find the solution, uh, where exactly we have the light at the end of the tunnel. What is this COVID trying to do uh, for people who are affected? Uh, can music help them? Can we revive that spirit of uh, harpiyata, that sensitivity? These are some of the things which our young people need to understand. Who are locked up only with work, with technology, with the business, with the running from pillar to post, right? They've been uh, running the rat race, and there is a, uh, a cutthroat competition and international travel business. But at, suddenly there is a break. Last four months and maybe another six months, we cannot be free. We cannot be mentally free. As a result, Panditji and others will understand. Our, other elders will understand who are watching this program. There are uh, depression, there is frustration, there is suicides, there is uh, domestic violence, and uh, uh, so many things happening which are unpleasant for Indian culture. Yeah. And music is the base. Music is Saraswati Puja. Music is divine. Music is which can enter into every home, irrespective of caste, creed, race, religion, east or west, north or south, as all of us know. Uh, from the Vedic times till today. And how Swami Vivekananda evolved his music, uh, wrote books on music, uh, composed so many things on music. And the first interaction between Swami Vivekananda, who was Narendra, still a college student of 18 years, and Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna was through two, two songs, just two simple songs. First interaction was in Kolkata, where somebody told that this young lad Narendra is has got a golden voice. He sings so well. And he, thanks to his father, learned music under so many ustads of Bengal and Raipur at the time. So, Manachalo Nijani Ketani, the first song which Narendra sang, Sri Ramakrishna went into ecstasy, went into Samadhi. So, there were so many beautiful things that happened. And uh, Swamiji used to sing to make just a small uh, an incident in Vivekananda's life. He took nearly one hour to just tune the Tanpura and the tabla, tuning it to so perfection. Sri Ramakrishna was upset, said, want this fellow, today he will tune, tomorrow he will sing. And tuning and tuning and tuning. And, uh, Sri Ram, and Narendra made a comment to Sri Ramakrishna. OK, Narendra made a comment to Sri Ramakrishna. When Sri Ramakrishna said, this fellow will uh, tune his instrument today, and tomorrow he will come and sing. We have to wait so long. Narendra became so sensitive, he became angry also, and said, uh, those who don't understand the value of music will comment like this, and went out of the room. <laughs> so, <laughs> he, was so he was a perfectionist, you know, and uh, all of, when you tune the, your sitar, when you tune the tabla, I remember what Vivekananda commented. So, it requires patience, it requires this one, but Vivekananda used to sing the alap, from uh, the uh, Gwalior Gharana or where it was the Lucknow Gharana. And uh, Sri Ramakrishna used to say he has lit up the fire. And he used to go into Samadhi instantly. So many beautiful songs. So the Ramakrishna Martin Mission has got several monks also. In fact, some of them are online listening to you, seeing you, and uh, contributing to this, uh, this one. And we have wonderful people uh, participating interested people, about 200 of them are on roll now, and uh, we have kept it open for 500 uh, uh, seekers, 500 people in the country to participate. So we start with Nayan Ghoshji, and uh, we request Aditya to just uh, have a chat with him, and uh, maybe Nayan Ghosh can sing or show some this one for the youngsters, as much as whatever is possible in the Zoom. Uh, thanks to COVID, it has separated man, but it has uh, brought all of us together in uh, online, no <laughs> technology. <laughs> so now, uh, we, yes, nine. Washington. Yes, uh, so Amiji, would you uh, will, will it be okay if I just speak a little for some time and then give a little demonstration because yes, time should be shared yes, yes. fairly with everyone. <laughs> that would be excellent. Aditya yeah. can talk about and am I am I clear? Uh, yes, absolutely, Panditji. Okay, okay. So uh, just uh, one small introduction, which Swamiji already covered of my family's connection with the Ramakrishna mission. My uncle Panalal Ghosh, 
was known as the father of North Indian flute, the Bansuri, who invented the Bansuri, the big bamboo flute. And my father, Pandit Nikhil Ghosh, the tabla maestro, they both were connected since their very young age. And uh, in fact, they both had uh, got their diksha from Swami Virajanand, the sixth president of the Ramakrishna mission, who was a direct uh, di uh, disciple as well as um, sevak of Swami Vivekanand himself. And so that's the connection. And myself, I have been very fortunate to get Diksha from Swami Vireshwaranand Ji, Prabhu Maharaj, who was the 10th president. So our connection with is very long and deep. Uh, however, uh, I would like to just tell you uh, that uh, my father and uncle both at one point of time in their young age had decided to take up sannyas and join the Ramakrishna mission. But it was Swami Sambudhanand of Bombay, the president, who told them that you will be serving God and society much better if you carry on with your music and uh, uh, you know, achieve great heights, um, train wonderful students who will become the next generation musicians, etc. That will be your contribution. And he said, you are actually already on a shortcut route to achieve God. So you don't have to wear saffron, he said. Swami, some Buddhananda was a very jovial person. So he said, you just through music, you will be, because, and ultimately, I mean, a lot of people know that they both were very, very saintly figures, my father and uncle. Anyway, that's our, and then in between, I will be telling you one uh, very interesting anecdote of Swamiji's musical side, uh, Swami Vivekananda's, Vivekan, uh, the musical aspect. However, I can start this way, that um, the, the pursuit of music is actually a sadhana. And when we say sadhana, we are talking about a term called a nishtha, which doesn't have a good English definition, but the closest we can come is discipline along with perseverance. That will be the closest definition or explanation for nishtha. And this helps to develop many many great qualities like patience, single-minded focus. And ultimately it helps to develop an inner strength, whether you call it mental strength, emotional strength, spiritual strength, psychological strength. This helps to achieve one's aims and goals in life, whichever field one chooses to take. <clears throat> Music is really extremely useful. And once music starts training, starts from a very young age, it helps to develop sanskar values. It creates uh, a lot of positivity and joy around you. And scientifically also, you know, music, it has been proved that there are so many benefits of music to the mind and body, both, and used as a therapy. And, you know, with the given situation, the pandemic, it helps to eliminate negativity. It makes people more, more sensitive to other people, to surroundings around, and helps to generate optimism. You know, these days we are passing, as Swami Jesus said, there's so much of negativity um, the, because of the pandemic and general trend of people, things like trolling and all that, um, you know, a good sound musical training will help you bypass all these things and take the more positive route. So if, if you are yourself in a very positive state of mind, you can not only grow yourself and achieve your dreams, but you can help others around you, society in general. 
then of course uh, we have music as a career and that requires certain things like first it requires is talent then it you need very good training rigorous training under great vidwans or stars for a for a considerable span of time hard work rigorous riyas for hours together developing finer skill and patience struggle uh, see struggle is always there in any field one takes in music also struggle helps and opportunities to develop your skill will come through automatically if you go through all these things talent training hard work developing patience and your struggle is bound to be successful there is light at the end of the tunnel and uh, you know music as a career i'm talking to younger people uh, who may be watching this viewers there are so many channels one can grow into a good performer one can grow into a groom oneself into a good teacher because we need a lot of teachers in schools and universities around in the country uh, where music can be taught right from a young age and right up to the degree or post graduate uh, or even helping phd students etc then there is another channel of composing we already have eminent composers here in our panel so composing in classical music a performer a good performer is already a good composer because he's composing on this spot and executing it at the same time but composing as a subject separate uh, you know creating great works great compositions that is another channel then finally if one goes through all these channels performing teaching composing research then one can there is another option the final option is a music critic we india needs very good music critics but experienced who have experienced all these different channels so music as a career now most important is that music helps to develop self belief confidence and once you believe in yourself you know you can overcome obstacles our country has the largest number percentage of youth and when every individual is able to achieve success it can contribute to in a very major way to nation building the young achievers will in turn help to inspire other youth from all strata of society and create a vibrant nation which is the subject we are discussing today and music dance music or dance even theater these are integral parts of our of our culture of our heritage gives you a very strong sense of identity a sense of belonging and it strengthens roots and helps to soar to great heights in short without wanting to take further time i would like let us have more interaction with the other panels and in course of time in between if there is a possibility or a pocket i'll tell you one very interesting incident of swami vivekanand's life so over to other panelists swami ji if you can yeah. please aditya end. aditya do any yes yeah. yes absolutely sir absolutely uh, pandit ji first of all it's an honor and privilege for us to be able to for me to be able to talk to you as you know having grown up admiring your playing and admiring your music all the way uh, so swami ji thank you very much for giving me this uh, privilege uh, should i say um uh, i would like to uh, take your uh, thoughts upon uh, you know you have been trained by not just your father as a great maestro but i do know that you know the greatest tabla players of time uh, have been in your house as you were growing up 
from Tira Khwa Khan Sahib to Amir Hussain Khan Sahib to everybody. Um, uh, how can you, can you talk us through what learning was like and what learning is going to look like for musicians uh, as we go forward for a future in Indian classical music? And uh -huh. your thoughts on this, please. Thank you. Um, well, since I grew up in a musical family, musician's family, I probably I'm the sixth generation of in a direct line of musicians in this family. But uh, music, uh, one a child takes to music very naturally. I mean, it's like fish taking to water, you know. So training and learning, I don't even remember how and when it started. Um, it probably started as as I I can tell you from the example of my son, you know, at around one and a half, he was already beginning to imbibe many musical matter and concepts. So by the time he was two years, 10 months, he gave his first tabla solo recital, my son Ishan. <clears throat> I, I remember in my life, uh, at the age of four, I gave my first All India Radio broadcast. Now, there's nothing to be surprised about this. This, this has to happen. Be surprised if it didn't happen. <laughs> so our training under my father, when I say our, I'm including my late younger brother, Dhruva Ghosh, and my sister, Tulika Ghosh. We are all initiated by the Ramakrishna Mission, <clears throat> by Swami Vireshwaranandaji. Ji. So all of us, we got our training from our father from a very young age, whether tabla, vocal music, es essentially these two were the base of our training. Sitar, I started in comparatively at a later age, around 11 or 12. However, the constant uh, musical atmosphere, environment at home, the ambience, uh, was continuously inspirational and motivating. So it happened such that in addition to the Talim, we were never told to do our riyas. We did it of our own for, we spent hours with our instrument or with vocal music. Uh, so there was a lot of motivation. And uh, then my father himself was a great uh, tabla player is publicly known, but few people know that he was a very, very equally good vocalist. And um, in the early part of his performing career, he even came out as a vocalist. But then a point came, he thought it is better to uh, be seen as anyone, either a vocalist or a tabla player. And, and uh, I didn't get to see much of my uncle because I was four years old when he passed away. He passed away, Panalalji passed away at the age of 48 uh, in 1916 um, in Delhi. And the last four years, that from the time I was born, he was already, uh, he shifted to um, Delhi as uh, director of the National Orchestra of All India Radio. So I got very little to see him. But there, his presence was always, you know, felt in a different way at our home and through my father's interaction right. with him, etc. And the most important thing that we got, in addition to my father's talim that we, we received in vocal and tabla, all around training, <clears throat> was the presence of my father's gurus, Ustad Amir Hussain Khan, you were talking about, and Ustad Ahmad Jan Tharakwa, and my father's friends, Pandit Ravi Shankar, Ustad Vilayat Khan, Nikhil Banerjee, Ali Akbar Khan, these people used to visit our home every every other day, you know. So there was so much of music happening. So in a way, musically speaking, I was born with a silver spoon <laughs> in right. the mouth. Right. right. Yes. <laughs> so uh, there cannot be a bigger blessing, you know, getting to see and hear these people day and night, and right, right in front, you know. Right. So these things inspired, and then. Out of inspiration, I used to do a lot of riyas, fine. But when Ustad Ahmadjan Thirakwa came and started staying in our home, he stayed, he lived almost a decade in our home. That was when I came to know what is called rigorous practice. 
practicing out of inspiration is one mm -hmm. and the other is practicing against i mean your your wishes your mind in the sense developing your a very strong uh, will power determination so um practicing on one bowl for 3 to 4 mm -hmm. hours on one one phrase and right. that used to be uh, really a bone breaking experience hmm. i mean um, at times i was probably around 11 or 12 years old when right. he used to make me practice on one bowl for 3 or 4 hours and he would practice himself he was, he was 90 plus then you know he right. played till till almost the age of 100 as a young man i mean age never showed right but uh, there were moments when I would almost feel my hand is falling apart and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe tears rolling down my cheeks and uh, Khan Sahib would say, don't stop. He would pick up the hammer and tell me, I'll break <laughs> your fingers. Don't stop. <laughs> so these are experiences that taught me a lot in life. I mean, right. Right. real hard work, what it means mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. what I gained from Ustad Ahmed right. Karakura. So, Panditji, I mean, uh, these kind of experiences in your learning, these kind of experiences in how you were brought up in music all around you, uh, for a for a tabla player or a musician today who's not from a musical family, um, your experiences were extremely guided. You had these great maestros around you who were guiding you at every stage. Today, there is access to information from all around, but perhaps not the greatest way to filter it. Um, mm. Your thoughts about how a modern student can find focus in their learning, can mm -hmm. find purpose in their learning and the right kind of guidance. Right. Nice question. Uh, for such youngsters, uh, I can say you start with little, uh, you know, there are two ways of practicing, I'll tell you. One is what is mechanical practice. The other is aesthetic practice. So the, it is very natural that in the process of practicing, the mind takes you towards the aesthetic practice more. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, feel, you enjoy that more because it's more colorful. It gives, it's more relaxing. But to, it's important that a youngster should, uh, should focus mm -hmm. on when during the mechanical practice, he should focus on what he is actually wanting to do and work on that little phrase which he needs to improve upon, which he needs to polish, in, in other words, sandpapering that uh, right. thing. And uh, if he starts with small phrases and for smaller durations and then gradually mm -hmm. grow, that will help youngsters, I mean, take a phrase. Uh, let's say, which you find difficult and uh, you feel it's not coming through and you want to achieve it. Right. Work on it for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, gra gradually raise it to half an hour and one hour and so on. That's how, I mean, just right. like, you know, one would do yoga or physical exercises also. Mm -hmm. So mechanical practices uh, like that, you have to develop uh, little by little. And then uh, very soon a time comes when you f see that you can play one particular bowl for an hour or even two hours and you're not really getting tired but you're enjoying it also right. you know sometimes chewing a uh, harda as, as you call you know uh, it, it tastes bitter but as you keep chewing it it starts tasting sweet so right. uh, this uh, helps in developing the willpower for practicing right. for young students. And then there is always time for aesthetic practice. Mm -hmm. Even even in your s session on mechanical practice, once you have worked for about an hour or two, then you feel like relaxing and you want to uh, play or sing something that you like, you know, right. a right. song or a, uh, a, you know, or a composition. And then you relax. Actually, your practice reflects in that uh, aesthetic practice. Mm -hmm. And mechanical right. practice, reflects you may not realize but it comes right. through and finally as years pass by you mm -hmm. develop a certain glow a certain mm -hmm. shine a certain mm -hmm. polish uh, right. and so whatever you perform mm -hmm. it comes out with an extra light right 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 absolutely yeah absolutely um 
to the second part of your question pandit ji if you could elaborate sorry, a little I'll, more I'll, on uh, sorry i'll i'll just uh, <laughs> complete you know there are different ways to uh, inspire yourself to practice young people mm-hmm. i'm telling you one is right. you you see your ideal uh, uh, your your idol okay mm-hmm. um, it may be your guruji so mm-hmm. try to uh, think of him as you are pra- pra- practicing him or her and uh, then there is another way out you know sometimes you take a little outing you take a break go out just get some fresh air read a good book or see a good movie or um, see a beautiful landscape appreciate some some beauty around okay and then that inspires you again to practice sit down and practice work hard there are many ways to inspire listen to recordings of other great masters who inspire you who really put you in awe and finally my father used to say a very interesting if you have a rival or somebody you are jealous of think of him <laughs> and practice and with a with a target that i'm going to play better than him <laughs> that's a very negative way of, uh, of practicing but sometimes one has to apply that also right right absolutely um uh, so to to the other part of it how does how does a young student today understand how to decipher this plethora of information that's all around um you know you open you if all not everybody has the fortune to maybe learn from a guru like you right so how does you are looking at youtube videos and you are looking at uh, a random facebook content and things all around you how do you decipher the the good from the bad what 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 are the responsibilities of teachers going forward uh in this technological era and also how must a student be aware and what can we do about this see first of all i i i, I can't say you must get the best guru around it's mm-hmm. sometimes not possible in a remote place right. but right. if you i'm t- telling about young children uh, young students if you can find a reasonably good guru um you start working and learning and the guru and see there are different gurus one is a person mm-hmm. the second guru is riyaz riyaz opens many avenues and riyaz imagine riyaz to be a person you know personify mm-hmm. it and you, you will see riyaz is already teaching you and showing you five other avenues right okay right and five final guru is the stage performance mm-hmm. that teaches you the ultimate but riyaz is a great guru and these two things um the person and the practice will help you develop a taste and the and the uh, ability for discrimination mm-hmm. what is good and what may not be so good right. and what is desirable for you to listen and inspire yourself and what you can afford to avoid listening to right right so uh, with and especially we are blessed with things like the youtube nowadays you have you have from the finest uh, of mm-hmm. music uh, to very very average you know so you have a huge range but the guru can help okay guru can tell you listen to so and so master and mm-hmm. you know and, and so you go to the youtube and and look for that great master and listen and who others Okay. the guru can tell and in the process your learning your practicing and listening you develop a taste and you exactly know what you like and what you don't like right so right. it's a process it's a process it can't just happen on one day you know okay i right. like this i don't like this right. and you develop a taste right so right. and right. you know there are different tastes different different right. likes and dislikes so what i mean a mm-hmm. garden is full of flowers different colors different flavors different aromas so you like different musicians you may not like so and so who otherwise is good by uh, by many standards but you like so and so you know right right absolutely yeah. um what is the uh, i mean uh, now i have as a tabla player i have uh, uh, a question uh that i hope will relate to uh, uh something in general which is um we have spoken about gharanas over the generations and we've spoken about tradition and how tradition evolves um mm. 
as we come to an era where information exchange is not so controlled uh how does identity as a musician uh, factor in today is it and what does what are the roles of identity and tradition as we go forward um and uh, how does one approach that idea and concept uh can you can you try to explain once more your yes. question yeah yes uh, of course man. so um so you know in the earlier days if someone was trained under the farukhabad garana or the punjab garana you oh. had a distinct style with which you were approaching your playing right as you are today exposed to everything there are so many newer influences etc coming in and the evolution of the tradition of an instrument or the tradition of an art has changed yes um how does one approach that concept of tradition going forward and what are your thoughts on this subject okay uh with regard to tabla if we are talking specifically of tabla tabla has a very interesting uh uh dimension which in vocal or sitar or anything like that any other instrument uh if one is taking training in vocal music in gwalior style or kirana mm-hmm. or or you know agra then uh, he's trained with the specific techniques of that gharana Uh, in tabla it's very interesting tabla actually doesn't have gharanas these are called baj so mm. baj different styles of playing so the word gharana has become applicable to tabla only now in the last 20 years or so so it wasn't so it was always baj so baj means method of playing and um um in tabla any tabla player of any gharana needs to play more than his gharana needs to acquire material of more than one gharana to make it complete because the, uh, for example if you are talking of delhi gharana which is the oldest gharana it has a lot of the kinar sound on the uh, edge the open sound and the tete is played with two fingers so it has a very fine poetic esoteric style mm-hmm. okay but tabla right. also needs the other style uh, the uh, the bold right. and colorful the more brilliant side right. also so for that farukhabad and lucknow one has to acquire material of those two other gharanas also mm. so essentially farukhabad lucknow on one side the bold side and uh, delhi on the finer side or delhi or right. its, its cousin is ajrada right. so they give a kind of a wholesome uh, outlook in in tabla and uh, even as one plays compositions delhi is restricted mainly to peshkars and kaidas okay but right. to play good relas or chakradars or tukdas and all these you need to uh, choose from lucknow and and farukhabad mm-hmm. so uh, for a tabla student it is very important uh, to to like and develop a taste for all the gharanas all the styles right. today we have recognized gharanas there are six till two generations back they recognized only four gharanas right you know the fifth and sixth is banaras and 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 punjab gharana we have mm-hmm. to accept that there is something special which is different from other styles uh, right. both punjab and banaras and uh, they um, one has to appreciate all that mm-hmm. and one may not necessarily have repertoire of all the six gharanas right and if you can play at least four or five of those styles mm-hmm. that's more than enough and right. um, it, it it gives a sense of completeness to the tabla art right, right. and uh, another thing i wanted to tell uh, like in vocal music if you take a composition you know the famous yaman composition for example eri ali piya bina mm-hmm. uh, Uh, you might be knowing that no this can be sung in different styles if you one sings in kirana it will be one style one can sing in gwalior one can sing in agra style the method of execution will differ right but it is not the case with tabla you take a composition mm-hmm. then you have to play that composition according to that gharana's technique right 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 so this is how tabla gharana i mean baj Uh, mm. is different right. from the gharanas of other subjects right right absolutely i don't know had did i answer your question you yes yes panditi absolutely 
um i think uh, as we are coming on uh, uh, on time also uh, it would be unfair of me to uh, to just have you talk we would really yeah. really have you love to have you perform something for everybody here um now, now? yes absolutely pandit ji if you uh, could play and demonstrate something or well, like uh, ideas what uh, i have can i play a little bit of sitar or something yes please please pandit ji some sitar or some tabla but, but or i hope i'm not taking king of the time of other panelists because we such can, brilliant people in the, in the we can discuss with you also pravin yes yes and uh, and also while you do that you might also want to share an incident with uh, swami vivekananda you wanted to talk about at any time i'll tell you me. yeah absolutely i'll tell you is this mic taking my sitar sound it is it is it is it is it This is Ram Rag Ram Kali. Yeah, if you can, okay? yeah, it was very, very soothing. <laughs> Thank you. You can involve Praveen and uh, Vedant also in this discussion, yes. and see yes. how you can bring about a consensus in music and inspire the children is what I want. Praveen, Virav, and uh, Vedant also. Yes. Sulajana. Yeah. Yes. Vedant is ready with his guitar for his song. <laughs> Praveen also. How we can. bring about this uh, inspiration music to young minds the national national movement what i would like to know from you yeah sure uh, uh, today like there are a lot of things in music one is the uh, classical what pandit ji has beautifully explained uh, what it is am i heard am i heard properly yes yes yeah <laughs> so uh, i would also uh, like to uh, think of music as a global thing first and then come to india and there are many cultures in the world where music is a very strong uh, language in, it, in embedded in the culture itself like the african culture like i'm talking about apart from indian uh, the jewish culture the chinese culture and many cultures 
every time uh, there's a, a child born there's a song being sung the child walks there's a song being sung there's a wedding there's a song being sung so it's embedded in the culture naturally so every uh, every person in the household or in the community they are influenced by music so music in the community level it's folk music we call it folk music so that's there one on one side and then there's evolution of uh, thoughts and uh, manodharma and how classical music became a individual music where uh, it became very very complicated for uh, the improvisations and the imaginations to gel together so slowly classical music became a individual institution because it was spiritually and each of us are spiritually inclined individually so it's not like i can share my spirituality with many people so that is the advent of indian music where it is highly revered in the whole world as spiritual music because it's the highest form of even a very normal superficial performance will be a tapas ah. so that's the reason why the whole world is looking towards india has been looking towards india for a long time for decades now and that's the reason why indian music is an exotic spiritual element throughout the world so i i see that music is the only way to communicate emotions without a barrier of language you know you don't need to speak something to communicate an emotion through music so this this said like everybody knows this like i'm just reiterating certain facts so that will be the best language to talk to everybody in india to grow together and uh, today at the advent of this uh, Uh, one is technology and the other is this covid corona thing everybody needs music earlier it was this corporate thing whether it's a technological uh, uh, get together or a ritualistic get together or any kind of get together it has to be enhanced by music for whatever reasons whether they like it or not it suddenly become a ritualistic thing that even if it's the highest of technological some electronic Uh, or some business management something is happening there is music there and then now when once the lockdown is done everybody online is into music so music is such a great part of our culture that is the only thing that can take india to an, a new level today so that's what i uh, personally feel and with all the traditions so many beautiful traditions and so many beautiful instruments and such a rich heritage of music i'm just talking about one heritage of india that is music there are a lot of other things as well just because today's uh, subject is music so the, there was a reason why certain legendary characters have music in their life like swami vivekananda ji they he had such a strong uh, line of music in his life so even as a parivrajaka he had a book of bhagavad gita and the french music with him so it means to say that every great thing in india or in history of the world has happened alongside with a parallel line of music so that's that's one of the greatest things i see as a future to india a resurgent india if you are thinking of building a resurgent india a resurgent thought to building india mm. it's music today and uh, again uh, aditya was uh, you were asking about how to filter music you know it's it's a fantastic subject like how today's students should filter good bad and uh, other things uh, which was beautifully answered by pandit ji and then i also thought that because of this exposure to every form of music across the world there is there is jazz there is uh, uh, classical western music there is pop there is rock there is metal there's there are so many different things what i feel as a student of music is there is something called hamsakshira nyaya hamsakshira it said that there are certain birds and animals who can if there is a, a bowl of milk which is diluted by water they have the capacity to draw only the milk out and leave the water behind so this is something that we automatically have in indian culture so we have our gurus ashirwad and whatever we are just Uh, gifted with this that we only take even if it is relatively if we say this is a dark music we have a way to pick up the bright things in that and incorporate it in our language in our language yeah. so that is 
why by by birth i think indians have got it because of our the land the the water in this land the the mud in this land has given us that so automatically that we have but then as pandit ji said we need our guru like the uh, three gurus the actual person guru then the personified gurus uh, to guide us through this uh, and because of this even swami vivekananda used to say he used to love the organizing factor in the west the here in india we have the solo music system where there's one musician who is a main person and then there are accompanists but in a western concert like western symphonic concert everybody there's no lead musician as such unless there's a oboe or a violin which is predominantly played so in a symphony that's organized living like a society that is that was what swami vivekananda he really loved the organizing factor the organized thing where people know what to play and they give enough courage to the other person to be heard also that is community living that's how we should live in life it's not only that there is one leader and we are accompanying so in that way if we incorporate the grammar and certain uh, documentations and the way to present from the west and our glorious heritage of indian music the spiritual uh, parallel line of music it will be a great thing that we can give it to the future that's what i would think fantastic fantastic, fantastic approach yeah. veda can you perform can you sing one pandit ji also oh. to you oh yes uh, swami ji that would be great uh, thank you uh, i'd like to sing a song uh, written by kabir where uh, he talks uh, something very similar and close to what we were discussing right now गुरु की करनी गुरु जाएगा चेले की करनी चेला सो द गुरु गोज अकॉर्डिंग टू हिज ओन एक्शन द चेला अकॉर्डिंग टू हिज ओन एंड द गुरु एंड द चेला आर टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बींग्स इन आर ओन इन आर ओन सेल्व वी आर आर ओन गुरु एंड वी आर आर ओन स्टूडेंट्स एंड द कॉन्शियंस इट सेल्फ इज आर गुरु सो i always think of it as don't let your conscience go one way and your actions <laughs> go another <laughs> so the song uh, was set to tune by the legendary pandit kumar gandharv and uh, when he was diagnosed by uh, a doctor saying that he has tuberculosis he was advised to take bed rest and not sing at all and not even speak so his wife uh, his family they took him to devas to his village and uh, he would often visit the shilnath dhuni uh, in the outskirts of devas and where uh, there was a swami shilnath and uh, he was a pr- practitioner of uh, kabir and he would always quote kabir and being in devas in madhya pradesh he also had all the kabir vanis you know the kabir folk singers the malwa kabir folk tradition uh, all the singers sing songs of kabir so this particular song ud jayega hans akela inspired pandit kumar gandharv to start singing again and that's the history of this song so ud jayega hans akela the swan will fly up high in the sky all alone and when it looks down onto the earth the whole world looks like a celebration and kabir goes on to say that just like how a leaf is blown away from the tree by the wind we never know which leaf belongs to which tree and when would we ever be able to meet again and the messengers the angels who work for lord yama the god of death are very good at the job that they do they come at the right time but whenever it's time we always feel that there could have been more time so jam se pada jhamela this war the tug of war with life and death will always go on kabir finally says that he sings the praises of all and the god that resides in all of us who is boundless and cannot be defined and then he says guru ki karni guru jayega chele ki karni chela उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा हंस अकेला उड़ जाएगा उड़ जा 
दर्शन का मेला जग दर्शन का मेला जग दर्शन का मेला जग दर्शन का मेला उड़ जाएगा बहुत दुहेला मिलना बहुत दुहेला ना जान किधर गिरेगा ना जान किधर गिरेगा लग्या पवन
something uh as lovely as love devotion surrender to motivation to bringing the nation together to bringing all of us together and uniting us uniting all our hearts together and in that uh, music there is no color there is no sex there is no we belong to different uh, religions nothing is there and it is completely boundless and it's it's definitely not man made <laughs> i feel music is something completely and totally divine and uh, we cannot take the onus of creating something which is uh, which has started from nadabindu from from the first uh, sound of creation that created this whole universe and uh, it's something divine and we are very blessed i am sure pandit nayan ghosh ji praveen rao ji and uh, aditya would uh, agree with me that we are blessed to be musicians yes and yes. Uh, and we are also blessed to be uh, music listeners right and it's not only about i feel that everybody who can speak can sing i, I uh, totally and completely uh, believe in that and it's not about the way you sing or how you sing but it is how you how you uh, connect with it and uh, yeah. it's it's just beautiful so sense yeah. of the sense of swar and lay is there in everyone it only has to be it has to bloom and yes. has to be guided yeah. properly it's there with in every human being and music True. is the most powerful medium right for human beings for for the entire world as you said to get everyone together and uh, is a great medium for nation building yeah exactly yeah. wonderful vedant really loved your presentation and i have been a big fan of uh, kumar gandhara ji as well and uh, his style of singing so great lovely and this is this meant a lot ud jayega has uh, it means a lot today yeah for the present condition yeah yeah we're going through really tough times and music is something that still takes us to you know it helps for stability of mind in such difficult times yeah yeah and uh, vedant if you can uh, give that devotional this one that vithala oh yes of course swami ji your favorite <laughs> <That's> my favorite <laughs> <laughs> if you can just uh, sing that so this is a song uh, that's written by sant namdev mm. where uh, it's actually a uh, as they say nowadays it's a mash up <laughs> of two songs <laughs> we used to say medley earlier uh, so <laughs> so it's a mash up of two songs of uh, sant namdev where uh, in the first one he says that i feel that my body is a boat and it's coming from lord vithala going through lord vithala and finally we will reach lord vithala again and uh, in this uh, uh, i don't need i don't need anything i don't need money i don't need any kind of protection worldly protections when i have the grace of lord vithala wow. and uh, this goes on to uh, one of uh, pandit bhim singh joshi's classics who happens to be my guru's guru my guru shri ram murthy rao uh, so he taught me this song pandit bhim singh joshi's uh, classic where he says that the river is lord vithala and the banks of the river the shores are also lord vithala your mother father your family your guru 
your lineage of gurus are all lord vithala the tiniest thought in your brain and the entire universe that encompasses all of us is lord vithala and in this kali yug we don't need anything other than complete devotion and utter surrender to lord vithala <laughs> Aditya's tabla on this song. <laughs> Aditya and myself organized uh, small concerts in uh, Chennai and Hyderabad also. Oh, yes. uh, meditation and music for youth. Oh. So Vedant used to sing Aditya's tabla, then I used to give comments and make them meditate five ten minutes, then start another song. It used to go for an hour like that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. We will. It used to be such a meditative experience, Swamiji. Kevin, can you think of it something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh, I was just saying that. Uh, we pray that zoom comes up with a way where we can perform together because that latency or uh, the, this is only made made for speech but hope one day it will be very easy for us to yeah <laughs> aditya in fact is aditya good. has found answers so that aditya has answer for that <laughs> <laughs> we managed to figure a way yes wow wonderful <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> जीव प्राणे का विठल जीव प्राणे का विठल चिन्हाव जीव प्राणे का विठल चिन्हाव ऐसी अम्ही भाव राख लिया पांडुरंगा ऐसी अम्ही भाव राख लिया पांडुरंगा जीव प्राणे कर विठल सिन्हा आवड़े पंठरी आवड़े चंद्र भागा आवड़े पंड आवड़े चंद्र भागा ये यमुना गंगा राख लिया पांडुरंगा ये यमुना गंगा राख लिया पांडुरंगा पांडुरंगा जीव प्राणे कठल सिन्हाम जीव प्राणे आवड़े पद्म तीर्थ आवड़े गरुड़ पार आवड़े पद्म तीर्थ आवड़े गरुड़ पार मणे माध
Hello. 
ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ that ill health diseases negativity and all those things will vanish from the face of the earth because where vitala where the divine flows ganga flows as they say whole thing both sides become so fertile so this is what with all the accompaniments are with that tabla bhai how your comment how you observe wonderful uh, there are a couple of uh, young young artists online who just like to say namaste to nayan ghosh ji may request uh, uh, yes maharashtra ashlesha ji yeah is there i will put ashlesha ji yeah ashlesha ji a drupad singer is there from hyderabad so i request her to just yeah ashlesha ji you can come online unmute your mic please and share your thought about this subject to aditya praveen and others ನಮಸ್ತೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಪಂಡಿತ್ ಜಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಆದಿತ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಶೇರ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಡಾಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೀ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಬಿನ್ ಲಿಸ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಓವರ್ ವೆಲ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು to be asked to talk right now so ಐ ಆಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯಾ i mean uh, i've recently been thinking about how to uh, i've been teaching my daughter um, a little bit um, and i've been thinking about how to bring you know music into the lives of other young people as well and um, what covid has really taught me is what you know what pandit ji so beautifully said is that music is a sadhana so um, it's it's so important it's so important to connect to our own um you know connect to our own music and Inner, right? to, uh, to practice you know and, and to the mechanical part the aesthetic um but both are so important to to just um, you know to to understand why do we do music that's a question i'm i'm holding for the last few years because i've been singing um for many years um and i love i love classical music i love all music but more recently over the last 10 to 20 years i've been doing drupad um and guided by my guruji pandit udaya bhavalkar ji and um, it's really uh, you know i feel like um, drupad ala for example really connects you to these syllables right and and the energy that you get from very small bits of music so it, it doesn't need to be a whole hour or whatever but just a little bit of music and, and it it inspires or it triggers certain thought processes which are which are very important which are you know uh, they give you a lot to introspect about mm. um and i've been so i'm not yet at the place i think where i can inspire other people and students as such um uh, because i'm thoroughly enjoying my own music right now but i keep pondering so i i have this question you know uh, what is how how did uh when do you let me re- rephrase and uh, try and um ask this uh, in a better way uh what is the point in your you know life when you sort of understood that you uh, wanted to teach and and how how did that because i'm sure that is also a process right to to come to a point where you feel like you have something to impart and share share yeah yeah other than just your music and your performances um and uh, what what is the inspiration for for that um i would like to ask all the panelists actually because you're all yeah but but pandit ji if you could uh, yeah sure sure nice very nice question and uh, you know teaching uh the passion for teaching comes because there is a passion for sharing mm-hmm. and uh, what, something that you have experienced through your own music and you want to share it with somebody else so the teaching comes and in the process teaching it's itself teaches you so much yes that 
uh, every teaching session is also a learning experience for not only the student but the guru himself and uh, i mean if you if a teacher has been able to not only teach the technical aspects but the essence the the uh, the spirit of that song or composition or that line or just a gr- bunch of notes the spirit behind it the uh, awakening of the soul that can happen with the proper use of a, just two or three notes also so if the pe- teacher has been able to uh, transmit not teach transmit uh and the student is able to not learn but imbibe uh, then uh, there is a beautiful chemistry that happens and uh, there is something that cannot be explained in words or in language it's an experience and um, after all the ultimate purpose of music making is to reach that point where language stops language cannot express any more and uh, it's an experience it takes you to such a high um ah uh, <laughs> see here also i'm at a loss of words <laughs> it's it's an experience that that it it's 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 a realization i'll say so i'm i'm going ahead of you know teaching and all that just just sharing and all that i'm going beyond that right now so just like in spiritual practice i mean moments come which are not spoken about normally in the life of a musician where a flash of a moment comes and he just finds tears rolling down his cheeks he can't explain to anyone in words what was that moment that's the ultimate truth even a single note can make bring that experience and if such an experience comes in the life of a musician even once he is a realized person so uh, you were ta- talking about swami ji's incident vivekananda's life incident oh yeah okay <laughs> uh probably this is known to many that in the course of his padayatra all across india uh, when he reached gwalior as he walked through a narrow lane he heard some very good vocal music happening dhrupad singing and he knocked on the door he wanted to listen and it happened to be the house home of the pandit family you know krishna rao shankar pandit the great khayal singer who was um, you know uh, nowadays we have meeta pandit from the same lineage her father is lakshman rao pandit his father krishna rao shankar pandit krishna rao shankar pandit's father shankar rao pandit and his younger brother eknath pandit it was eknath pandit who was practicing and swami ji knocked on the door and uh, asked to be permission to come inside and uh, he was welcomed and swami ji sat in a corner and asked him to continue his singing and he was uh, really uh, enjoying eknath pandit's dhrupad singing and uh, swami ji felt at a point that pakhavaj was necessary to accompany and he saw pakhavaj in the corner of the room and he asked can i play with you can i perform pakhavaj with you he said sure he tuned it up and they continued eknath pandit was singing and swami ji was accompanying on pakhavaj as we all know swami ji learned not only vocal music but pakhavaj also from a great lineage his guru was murari mohan gupta of the lala keval kishan gharana you know <clears throat> so swami ji gave very good pakhavaj accompaniment it was so good that एकनाथ पंडित सेड आपके भजाने से लगता है आप गाते भी होंगे बहुत अच्छा फ्रॉम द वे यू आर प्लेइंग पखावज 
there is so much of musicality in your playing you might be a good singer he said well i sing out of very humbly swami ji said yes i do so eknath pandit said can i listen to your vocal swami ji agreed tuned up the tanpura now eknath pandit got worried who's going to play the pakhavaj so he thought maybe he should go somewhere and get a pakhavaj player you know swami ji said no no don't worry i'll play it myself and he sang and he accompanied himself on the pakhavaj and one couldn't believe that it was one person doing both the jobs at the same time there was so much of uh, proficiency and the sentence came out from eknath pandit's mouth that aap gayak nahi aap nayak hain and so you know in the olden times musicians were categorized in different ways nayak was the highest someone who can perform someone who can teach someone who can compose someone um, you know uh, an all rounder um, so there were four nayaks in uh, the history of indian music not even tansen got that title nayak nayak baiju nayak dhondu nayak chachu and so on uh, <coughs> but uh, swami ji was called nayak and this incident uh, was written by my father on swami ji's centenary year 1963 as an article in ramkrishna missions magazine and a special photograph of swami ji playing pakhavaj was arranged by my father which was a painting beautifully done and now i think many people have seen this picture of some swami ji playing the pakhavaj so my father got it done by a great painter bada kere from bombay and uh, the title of that article was nayak naren wow. <laughs> maybe I'll, i'll try to browse it and pass it on to all the artists <laughs> sure yeah wonderful it is pravin that uh, swami ji's love for drupad yes absolutely like uh, there's i i think it needs a different session yes, to yes, speak yes. about swami ji and uh, his music yes. how he used to uh, love drupad and uh, what happened to him and uh, rather than small like talking about swami ji i would i would uh, tell you my experience uh, like as you mentioned uh, maharaj earlier we did a project called uh, viveka namana like using swami ji's words swami ji's songs composed by him written by him and songs written by other great poets on swami ji so it was almost a uh, four four and a half hours show with around 20 25 musicians on stage we had sarangi pakhavaz uh, tabla and around 20 15 singers and we had some actors as well who would enact the scene so this we did to mark the 150th year of uh, swami ji's birthday so when this happened it was in bangalore in, in mysore in karnataka where we did it predominantly in our regional language kannada then when we were invited to uh hyderabad by uh, swami ji bodhamayanand ji uh we added some telugu songs to it which were popular there then we were invited to lucknow and uh, other places and then finally belurmat we had it some added some uh, uh bengali songs and we performed 10 feet away from swami ji's room oh. so that that vibrations what we felt there you know we have read a lot about swami ji and that the energy is within us that that vibration was so strong we could literally you know i i personally i could feel the vibrations of that pakha was coming through yeah, wow. and then the the miraculous thing was we performed khandana bhava vandana which was swami ji's wow. composition once we performed then the uh, maharaj was doing the aarti he came over and said can you record this for me uh-huh. and then we sent him a recording the thing that we were a full group of kannada artists trying to imitate bengali like you know it's it's not easy to get the diction and stuff right and but then that vibration was so beautiful there that maharaj was inspired to ask us can you get a recording of this so though it was sung by kannada singers so that i would definitely say that as a great uh, moment for me as a musician that we could perform very close to where swami used to sing and perform so uh, it it's been a great journey with ashram and i should say that 
personally whatever i am is because of uh, ramkrishna martin mission because even my inspiration into music was the bhajans that was sung in the prayer and then my shiksha guru who was swami purushottamanand ji maharaj he told me suddenly one day why don't you learn the harmonium then i went and joined the classes then suddenly a few years later he said i think you should learn the tabla as well then i went and joined the class and every step looking back today i see that it was marked mapped and given by my guru <laughs> it's it's miraculous and then uh, coming back to the subject uh, due to this covid uh, thing a few weeks was very difficult for us because uh, i am a workaholic i spend my day and night in the studio and uh, uh, that's how it works but suddenly everything was cut off so 15 days it was for myself then i did whatever uh, i could as a musician i had my rehearsal uh, riyaz and i used to do my composition my thoughts some television some that some newspaper everything happened but then two three weeks down then i suddenly realized i can't sit quiet so i just some thought came into my mind and i call it some yochane yochane in kannada means thought some thought so i added certain friends of mine who are poets it so happens in our industry in whichever uh, uh, industry uh, especially commercial industry it's a marketing strategy or it is for quality sake we only take the top level of artists if we have poets we take the top level level of poets top level of singers who will sell well in the community and everything is has to be on the first line so the rest of the the pyramid is usually they have to work really really hard to get where they are or to be seen so what i thought i i thought of a, uh, uh, an exercise where i invited new poets to give their to post their poetry on facebook in one certain uh, i made a page then i invited composers to compose it multiple composers composing the same poetry or multiple poetry is being composed by the same composer and then i invited singers to sing it so this now in the past 2 months it has gathered almost around i have 250 poets who write beautiful poetry especially in the regional language and around 400 singers who have been singing every day new poetry and that and it's it's a beautiful family who do not have to go out in the streets to enjoy so we have utilized the facebook uh, whatever to create this so now the same thing has been uh, shifted to other languages as well some friends of mine they also started so music what i did was a very superficial level it was not on the spiritual level or nothing very great but just music without judgment like what i said is there's no judgment you can create what you want you sing how you want we will all just listen learn by ourselves watching others grow so this has created such a beautiful community here that many of us thousands of us thousands of artists and uh, lakhs of viewers and singers across the globe are part of this uh, small exercise and uh, this is one small thing if taken into a national level it will definitely change the face of uh, our suffering we now we don't even remember what covid is doing outside so we are totally in us uh, like we have our peace inside so we are vibrating to what's happening outside but still we have our place inside so this is one small uh, present situation i i just wanted to uh, tell you because i was listening to all of you and uh, getting motivated because of that and uh, i really thank swami ji for having created this wonderful platform to uh, share our thoughts today and i i uh, thank you thank you pandit ji it is great to uh, uh-huh. talk to you directly i have been a big fan of yours and everybody else vedant and aditya thank you very much it's a very wonderful uh, opportunity to meet everybody on same ideas and sharing with the younger generation with the people uh, anirudh the artists who are online who can just greet uh, us and yes definitely maharaj uh... Maharaj, uh, actually, I am learning Pakhavaj from Pandit Sukhad Munde ji. So he is here, but I think he is having a little connectivity issue. I would just like to check with him if. He... And apart from Sukhad ji, I have my friends from Indian Raga. Purnima is here, who is a flautist. And uh, uh, if... 
Sorry, sorry to interrupt, uh, yeah. Swamiji and Panditji. If you can permit me, I got another live at one. Okay. So yes. thank you so much. It was wonderful meeting all of you. I I'll just add, uh, Pravinji, uh, Swamiji's composition "Khandar Na Bhava Bandhan," which is yes. sung at the Aarti's. Uh -huh. It's an amazing composition. I mean, there is, is a beautiful. Uh, the Drupad element is there, fine, but there's such a beautiful Western uh, concept also. Yes, yes, yes. The yes. second line, Niranjana Nara Rupa Dhara. The way yes, it comes yes, yes. From, uh, yes, yes. from the upper ray to the pa, uh, come down to pa. What a beautiful concept. I mean, so beautifully uh, merged into Drupad, the Western concept. Yeah, it's, it's such a beautiful thing. Like, it's got Drupad, the Western element, and the bhajan uh, thing. Ah. When you say namo, namo, yes. and, that, and yes. that three elements have really made that. And I always say whenever we perform, that that is one thing that has made the world one because every minute somewhere in the world the aarti is going on yeah if you think of that somewhere in the world the aarti is going on every minute so there's constant non stop 24 7 365 days the aarti is happening in the world so that is actually i think is balancing the vibrations of the world in a very different way because every time i used to sing the aarti that the, the, the words like the Vishnu Sahasranama, it used to create some vibration, some some cleansing. I would feel some cleansing happening. Yes, yes. So I hope that that prayer is actually cleansing the world yeah. automatically. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you for referring to that, uh, Panditji. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you, Praveen. See you again. Thank, thank you. Yeah. With some more ideas. Yes, sure. sure. Thank, you. thank you. Okay. Thank you, Praveenji. Yes, Maharaj, there's one more musician from Hyderabad, Jayavant Naiduji, who I can see on the screen. Uh, sir, if you could please unmute and speak. Just two minutes. Yes, who is there? Who is that artist? Jayavant Naiduji. He Jayavant Naiduji. plays. Namaste. Unmute the mic. His mic is unmuted. Is waiting or what? I, I think uh, there's some issues. Okay. okay. So these are the musicians that I know that are here. I'm sure there are other musicians here as well. Yeah. But um, if Amar yeah. uh, Jayavanji is here. Mm -hmm. Namaste to Swamiji and everyone. Namaste. Uh, I have a question to Nainji. Yeah. Nainji, uh, is it audible? Yeah. 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 Nainji, I would like to ask that in your journey of music in your life has any difficult time come when music healed your uh, you know situation any 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 particular tough moment yes many 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 <laughs> so can you share one maybe <laughs> uh, difficult moments it was for example, I'll, I can't think any particular moment, but certainly music has helped me at difficult times. Uh, when I lost my father um, in 1995, my father was also my guru and he was also my best friend. So for me, I mean, like anyone else, losing a father uh, is like you have that uh, the big shelter above your head that has collapsed, you know. Mm, that feeling is there. But for me, I felt I lost something far much more, you know, when my father passed away. And uh, he was, as everyone knows, he was a great musician. He was an institution builder. He was a great, uh, I mean, human being. He was a great realized person. However, I went on singing the song which he taught me, a Baul song, uh, about looking for a guru. Oh. And I used to cry and keep singing that song which he taught me. It was a Baul song, In Search of a Guru. And that gave me a lot of peace of mind and you won't believe that uh, once there was one particular vocal composition that he had taught me a few uh, weeks before he passed away, 
and he couldn't remember the antara the second part of the song and he said when it comes i'll give it to you he said and after days of crying and singing that song he came in my dream and he gave me the antara oh yeah the yeah. second part of that song <laughs> very yeah. personal but very very inspired very inspired thank you thank you very much thank you thank you uh, thank you for coming and uh, speaking to us and uh, i think it is time uh, aditya where are uh, where are you aditya is there or? i'm here sir ji i'm here i'm here yes. so your final thoughts what we can do out with the with the support of ji and others how we can take this forward i think i think swami ji when uh, <laughs> i mean i have Uh, I think everything that needs to be said has been said and sung so beautifully, and such lovely thoughts have been shared. I think uh, my generation and youngsters to come have a lot to be inspired by, and uh, and hopefully we continue to be inspired by these great people and uh, and look for a way forward to continue the legacy that they have they are setting as a benchmark for us. Yes, yes. And uh, I think that's what we can look forward to. Yes. So if you can take, uh, if uh, Pandit Ji can help. Uh, can support us and take this movement forward sure yeah. this covid is not going to end now and there will be still more pain and still more uh, infection spreading as they say the entire month of july if we take yeah. this number also to come to normal terms so in the meantime some more sessions some more short programs uh, if you can give time and uh, with your great blessings to these youngsters we can create a movement in the country sure our Well, it's, our, it's, it's our duty yeah so if we can conduct something meet again uh, maybe um, on saturday or guru purnima day for few minutes share some okay. thoughts some songs okay then uh, <laughs> how it goes forward we'll work it out sure sure so it's very fortunate we are very fortunate to have you nearly 2 hours you have spent time with us vedant ji maharaj yeah, yes, swami ji this is just uh, <laughs> out of a sense of duty yeah. and uh, i mean these yeah. are very important <laughs> things yeah <laughs> so namaste to all of you and all the other participants yeah. other uh, people who have listened to the music and discussions uh, please uh, write your feedback to us your feelings on hyderabad.vihe@rkmm.org that is our email id and we shall share it with others and see that this music and care and love affection will continue to inspire younger generation and uh, uh, remove and uh, to some extent reduce the suffering and problems in the country make india peaceful make india strong again a resurgent india as swami ji wanted thank you swami ji thank you aditya thank you pravin bhai thank you vedant Thank you. Thank you. It's a beautiful so experience. Thank you, Swami Ji. Thank you very much. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Till then. Till now.